Hello students, welcome previously lesson 1 from 1 to big 2 we have done the introduction of symbol classification of substances and we said we have three types of mixtures which will be discussed in details the first one was solid solid mixture the second one was solid liquid mixture and the last one was liquid liquid mixture so in lesson one we are done solid solid mixtures so today lesson two we want to proceed to the second type of mixtures which is solid liquid mixtures so we are saying categories of solid liquid mixtures include Roman 1 insoluble solid liquid mixtures, Roman 2 soluble solid liquid mixtures. So today our lesson will be mainly on the insoluble solid liquid mixtures. So we go insoluble solid liquid mixtures. And we're saying in this category the solid does not dissolve in the liquid. Examples of insoluble solid liquid mixtures include we have sand plus water. Apart from that, we can have even sulfur plus water, which is an example of insoluble solid liquid mixture. We can have even sulfur plus borobanol. So we can have sulfur plus borobanol. They are going to form insoluble solid liquid mixtures. That means the solid does not dissolve in the liquid or in the solvent. So next we are going to go to separation of insoluble solid liquid mixtures and we are saying the methods of separating insoluble solid liquid mixtures include the following. The first one is called decantation and we are saying this method is used to separate a mixture of a liquid and a solid in which the solid has settled at the bottom of the container. We are saying decantation can be used to separate a mixture of cast sand and also water. So if we are having a mixture of sand and water, we can use decantation method to separate it. We are saying after all the sand has settled at the bottom of the container, water is carefully poured out into another container with the help of a glass rod. The settled solid particles form the sediment. For example, if you are having water and also sand, the sand will settle at the bottom. So the sand will form the sediment. So when you see this diagram here, we are having a diagram for decantation method. So we are having the mixture of sand and water in this beaker. And we see the sand settled at the bottom because it is denser than the water. So it settles at the bottom of the beaker and forms sediment. Then we are going to carefully pour out the water into another, another beaker or another container. This is called receiving container or receiving vessel. So pouring out carefully is known as decanting. That's what's called decanting. So decanting is pouring or carefully pouring out liquid into the receiving vessel. So next, we are seeing the role of the glass rod. This is a glass rod. No, sorry. It's a glass rod. During decantation is to ensure that the liquid is poured directly into the receiving container without any spillage as the, the liquid follows along it. So this is the glass rod that we are using during the decantation method. So we got description on how a mixture of sand and water are separated by the condition method. And we're saying put or place the mixture of sand and water into a beaker and allow it to settle so that the sand settles at the bottom of the beaker. Okay, next we're saying pour off the water carefully into another empty beaker with the help of a glass rod. Full stop. And we can draw the, the diagram for the decantation method to support our statements. So we proceed. We are having conditions that favors decantation method. We have two conditions. The first condition is that the solid must be insoluble in the solvent. That's the only time when we can use decantation method. 
Number two, the solid must be denser than the solvent or the, the liquid. In our case, the sand is denser than the liquid. Those are the two conditions for decantation method to be used. So we got advantages of using decantation method. One, it is cheap. And number two, it does not waste time. So we proceed to the advantage of using decantation method. We are saying the water collected is not clean or it's not clear. The reason is some solid particle passes through the liquid in the process of decanting. When you are carefully pouring out the water into other receiving container, some small solid particle passes with the water. Next, we proceed to application of decantation method. Number one, it's used to purify water. And number two, it's used in food industries. So we call number two, filtration. So filtration, we are seeing it's used to separate a solid that is suspended in a liquid. It uses a filter through which water molecule can pass through easily, but not solid particles. But not solid particles. Next, we are seeing the commonly used type of filters in the chemistry laboratory is the filter paper. It contains tiny pores through which liquids can pass is easily, but solid particles cannot. The liquid that passes through the filter is called filtrate, and the solid that remains on the filter is called residue. So you have to know filtrate and also residue. So filtrate is the liquid that passes through the filter or through the filter paper. What about the residue? Is the solid that remains on the filter paper is called residue. We are saying this method can be used to separate a mixture of water and also sand or soil. So we proceed and we are going to see description on how a mixture of sand and water are separated by filtration method, not decantation method. So we are saying put or place the mixture of sand and water into a paper. Then we are supposed to fold a filter paper into a cone shape. Open the cone and fit it into a filter funnel. Full stop, we are to wet the filter funnel with some water so that it sticks on the side of the funnel. Then pour the mixture slowly into the filter funnel fitted with the filter paper. Then we are told clean water follows into the beaker and collected as filtrate, while sand or the sand particles are left on the filter paper and collected as residue. So we have this uh, diagram here to support our, our statements filtration method. So here we are having the filter funnel and we are having the filter paper there into a cone shape and we have put our mixture of soil and water into the filter funnel fitted with the filter paper then we are having clean water running into the beaker and the water is collected as a filtrate and it's clean water so let us see advantages and disadvantages of using filtration method and the application of filtration method so the advantages we are saying the advantages we are saying uh, the water collected is clean or it is clear why as it does not contain small suspended solid particles or sand particles so the advantage of using filtration is that the water collected is clean it is efficient so the disadvantage of using filtration method is that it does not remove dissolve the substances that's the disadvantage of using filtration method. application of filtration method it's used in water purification plants that's what you can see and these are the diagrams showing the applications of the filtration method so today that's the end of our video thank you